We are here at the TMI Studios after a successful junior day at Michigan with our very own Sam Webb. I am Bryce Merritt and we're here to talk about the latest and greatest in football. Um, so Sam, we had a couple guys stop at the studio today. Take me through kind of what guys stopped and what guys told you. So, I mean, the, the names that people would know, uh, Eddie Turk uh, came in, it was the Illinois. It was the Illinois show today. We had uh, Eddie Turk drop by, uh, Marianne Stewart drop by. Um, of course, Marquise Lightfoot was a bit of a surprise to people uh, that arguably the top edge on Michigan's board was able to make it by uh, today as well. And then, uh, you know, a, a young guy that they, that was part of their crew and is gonna be a guy to keep an eye on here over the next couple of years, uh, Andrew Elkere. I made it in as well, but those those three guys that I first mentioned, those are the three guys with, with offers. Uh, they made it by and they're big time targets and they gave us a real feel for what the junior day was like. And not only that, we also had a parent say they, they wanted to hop on set there, yeah. Sam, uh, Marianne Stewart's mom. She wanted to say a couple few things as well. Talk about the interaction you had with mom as well. Yeah, Sequita so Stewart is, um, She's how a recruiting mom, this, that's exactly what you want. I mean, first of all, they've been through it before with their exactly. older son exactly. going through the recruiting process. So letting him sort of experience it, telling him what to look for and making it his decision, but also stepping in because they've seen it before, saying, hey, this is what I want to see my son kind of experience in the in the college recruiting process and in the school i want to make sure the school really really wants them it's real easy to get caught up you know because all the coaches at the end of the day are are selling you a dream but which one can really make it reality right exactly and so that's where mom you can so she slid in that interview. she didn't plan to be in the interview at first but she came in and said look this is how i see it from a mom's perspective and his dad was over there too his dad, Ira, a big, big Fab Five fan. Doesn't hurt that, you know, big bro at Eastern. They've been to Michigan a few times. All the Illinois contingent here. I think Michigan is in really, really good shape with Marion Stewart. But he's going to go through the process. I mean, I took that away from the interaction. I don't know if, if you got that vibe, too. Michigan is in great shape. But he's going to go through the process of bit and then make a decision in some. No, absolutely. And, you know, I think, too, with going back, Marquise and Eddie, I think at the same bow or in the same token, Michigan's sitting in a very good position for both of them as well. I think they want to take their time. They're still hearing from other schools. They're still garnering interest and in even new offers they might get for some of these guys as well. Um, but Michigan has set themselves up in a great position with all three. And on top of that, it wasn't just the Illinois show, at least in the studio, but in Ann Arbor at Schembechler Hall, Ohio was very well represented. You had Brian Robinson, Luke Hamilton, who's currently committed, and Ben Roebuck, a couple other guys as well. But those three, can you highlight on them as well? Yeah, so let's let's sort of handicap, as we segue, handicap Eddie and Marquise Lightfoot. I think with, with Marquise, his recruitment, he's, he's approaching 40 offers. I mean, I, I think maybe from a from a, you know, sort of profile standpoint or buzz standpoint, he's exploded more in the past year than any of those guys. I mean, you still have Justin Scott ranked ahead of him, right? But it's, in terms of who's the hottest prospect in Illinois, Marquise Lightfoot is up there. I think the positive for Michigan in that race is they were an early adopter. They were one of the first schools to offer him. They were one of his first visits. I think that resonates. With Eddie Turk, I think it's different. Well, I mean, they were they offered him after his sophomore year, so there is that. But he's been here like six times, right? Been here a lot. So, so the number of times that he's been to Ann Arbor, I, I think, put, and he's really, really uh, cool. His family's cool with JJ's family, uh, so that's a thing. They know Jimmy Rolder, so there's a comfort level here as well, and then he has his own comfort level with the staff. You up here that many times, Michigan. I, he didn't say they were his favorite. He said he hadn't narrowed down his list yet. Michigan is going to be. Whatever cut he makes, Michigan is going to be right there in the mix. And you can make the argument that they might be the team to beat at this point. You move over to talking about Ohio. Brian Robinson isn't quite Eddie Turk with the number of times that he's been up here. 
He's getting there, Bryce. He's going to be back. Brian Robinson going to be back in Ann Arbor Thursday, I'm assuming, for the Purdue game, which is a night game, a 9 o'clock game. He's coming back up from Youngstown. That's not a short trip. That's at no. least three and a half hours yeah. to make it home, and he's coming right back after being back here Sunday. You got, I, I think this. these are my words. Brian did not say this. His dad did not say this. I want to make that clear. They have said nothing about having a favorite. It is my opinion that Michigan is the team to beat for Brian Robinson. I wonder what you think about that. I know. I'm in the same boat as well. I think that connection he has with Steve Klingscale, the Youngstown connection there, along with he knows a lot of the guys as well on the team currently even coming in. I mean, Michigan landed several guys from the state of Ohio this past recruiting cycle, and now they're kind of trying to keep the same trend going this cycle as well. Um, and Luke, I talked to Luke. Hamilton, who's been committed since the Ohio State game. Big thing he told me in his recruiting hat on. He was targeting a couple of guys. Ben Roebuck, he was hitting on hard. A couple of offensive linemen, especially Brian as well. But Sam, I want to ask you, biggest takeaway from the guys we had in studio, what, what did you get from this junior day? And I think one thing I want to point out that you might talk about <laughs> was they talked about Jim Harbaugh. Yeah. And they talked about the NSA investigations as well. Haters is the, is what I don't know if Jim used the word hater. He might have, but he said, "Yeah, man, you know, anytime you have success, he said they they likened it to a tree." He said, "Anytime you have success and the tree is growing, the tree is growing and adding branches and getting higher and getting higher, it's always gonna be some some people at the bottom, at the base, trying to chop you down." And so they. They said he he referenced like not just the NFL rumors, but this whole NCAA thing. Yeah. Said you know people they have success and this success has enemies, so to speak, and the, and the enemies of success will try to chop you down. And those these are I don't know if he said enemies of success. I know he said he's like a tree and they're trying to chop me down. Right. <laughs> he definitely said that right. So and they all talked about that and seemed to really kind of take to it, kind of identify with it, tend to agree with it. Uh, I think Jim Harbaugh, with what he said today, not only gave the prospects and their family some confidence that he's here for the long haul, but he also kind of showed them a side that maybe they hadn't really seen before, you know, a kind of fire and brimstone side where they're like, okay, yeah, that's a guy, that's a guy that we could see ourselves playing for.